Hello, my name is Matthew Dolan. I'm the executive chef of 25 Lusk here in San Francisco, also one of the partners. Uh, very excited about this dish we're about to prepare for you. We're grilling a little uh, number one grade ahi tuna, sushi grade tuna. Behaves beautifully off the grill. We're gonna serve that with a sesame and beet coulis, also a, just a thin puree, um, some kohlrabi, viparas, and some sea beans. So we'll kind of explain all that as we go, but let's head over to the grill and start grilling some tuna. So first, we cut a nice little block of this tuna. We wanted to get rid of the bloodline, we want to check it for color, smell it to make sure it's perfectly fresh. We got this today, it was fished yesterday. So the fresher the better, let's take this over to the grill. While we're at the grill, two things are very important. Salt and pepper for our seasoning, so we're gonna season this lightly with salt and evenly. And then again, with some fresh pepper. And that's that guy. Peppercorns that came with us. Now this process takes very little time. So I'm going straight on the grill. You hear that nice sear. Your backyard grill is also a good way to go. And then I'm literally going to just kiss each side. Because this tuna is such high quality and is so incredibly fresh, which is the way it should be with all fish, um, that's the deal. You also want to make sure that the tuna that you're using is land line, I'm sorry, hand line or long line caught and nothing with trolls, it would not be the most sustainable option. So as you can see, I'm just moving it around a little bit here and there, getting a nice dark brown sear, but not burning it. Again, if you burn it, then it's bitter, so it'll lose that beautiful, beautiful flavor, that beautiful freshness will be clouded by this bitterness of just too much of a char on the outside. And that's it, we are done. And so we quickly just got a nice sear, and we're ready to start building the salad. That is the garnish for this tuna. So we begin with kohlrabi. Uh, kohlrabi means broccoli cabbage in German. And it is one of the cabbage families, but you can eat it uh, raw in a salad. You could cook it. I like to shave it thinly and dress it with a little bit of lemon juice and olive oil, salt, pepper, some herbs, and whatever else you're doing with the dish as it is, it is its best expression raw, and it's its healthiest also. So I've been asked before, you know, this is a, when it has its branches on, it's quite of an imposing thing. I've been asked, well, how do you do it? Like, how do you, I have no idea how to even go about this. Just get your vegetable peeler out and start peeling. And if you have a slicer of some sort, you could do that. So we're gonna peel the edges off here. And this kohlrabi is being a little bit, a little bit less uh, forgiving than the others. So we're going to take that and we're just going to slice the outside off if your peeler isn't working, so you have options. And then we'll just shave a few nice little pieces, and there you go. Kohlrabi's in the bowl, and that's that. Now the next step, we're going to take these sea beans that we've sautéed and then chilled so that they, they remain some tex they retain some texture. Uh, for further garnish to this dish, adding a little baby kale. Kale is not only delicious, it's very good for you. And then we have a few things that we'll finish this dish with. So now we're gonna take our tuna, and we're gonna find that beautiful grain. You see the lines are running through it, and you wanna cut across the grain. So nice, quick little slice of the tuna, and we'll head back over to the plate to finish the dish. So, we have our sea beans and our kohlrabi, our kale, and that little salad, it's a sort of a room temperature warm salad. Earlier we roasted these beets and we added a little bit of sesame paste to the beets. So we'll begin with that, we've tasted it. We've added salt and pepper, a little bit of lime to really brighten it up so that it works well with the fish. We'll put a little bit of that down on the plate. Maybe just smear that over there. Next we're gonna take this warm salad and just position that right on plate with the sauce and then we have this tuna that we've grilled again we grilled it really quickly we made sure we seasoned it and this piece doesn't want to stay put but that's fine and there we have it so last little last little garnish for this one we're going to take these spiced hazelnuts and we made them in the same way you would make honey roasted peanuts with sugar and honey we boiled it we toasted the hazelnuts we put them in the uh, in the oven so that that would tack up around the outside Salted the way it came out. Reason for that is it adds a little salty, spicy, nutty contrast to the sweet, earthy, and freshness 
all kind of bringing together this delicious tuna dish. The finishing touch, I forget, were these piparas, which are a pickled pepper from the Basque country. And this is where the wine pairing portion gets a little bit tri tricky. Um, if it were just the beets, you'd have that opportunity to go to Gamay or something from Beaujolais. Um, but with the piparas, you add a little bit of spice and a sourness. So for me, I want a dry Riesling. And even if the Riesling has a little bit of residual sugar, the dish still comes together well. Because with those dry Rieslings, yeah, you might get a little petroleum, but you should also get that bright citrus, some interesting fruits, and there's a wide variety depending on where they come from. But the style and the, the beauty of Riesling would really work well with this dish. Something we do also quite a bit here at the restaurant. So thank you very much. Um, your grilled tuna. And I'm Matthew Dolan, and it was a pleasure to cook for you.